And today we're going to talk about saving seeds from your garden or from your neighbor's garden and uh, collecting them, storing them. And there are actually just two processes to doing this. So why even bother to save seeds? Number one, seeds are becoming very expensive. And if you have bought your seeds recently, you notice that the more popular seeds like the heirloom and open pollinated varieties, you're getting less quantity in the packaging. So you also want to save your seeds primarily because your seed remembers where it was grown. You know this because if you purchase seeds that first year that you buy them, say you buy seeds from Germany or Canada or even California, the first year that you're planting it, it's not like the seed catalog states. And the plant actually looks in your garden and it says, Mama, you didn't tell me that it was going to be like this. A seed builds within itself. Um, and I'm going to actually quote from one of the seed books. And I do recommend three books in the handouts that you're going to get. I just have given Julie the handouts today. So you have to give her a few days to email them or they will be available at the library when you come here to pick up your seeds. Because I do have seeds from my garden that I'm going to share with you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but in the seed book, it says the embryonic plant that rests within a seed contains its genetics, traits, history, tolerance to heat, drought, diseases, and cold hardiness from where it was grown. That is all stored in its DNA. Saving seeds from your garden uh, inherently makes them more adaptable to your local climate, your soils, even if it's grown in containers. And the seeds that I'm going to give you, I do state if they were grown in containers because they do make, some of them make great container plantings. So it makes it resistant to drought and rain. And boy, we haven't had much rain this year. So the seeds that you're going to get are going to remember that and build within its own DNA that ability to withstand the heat and the drought. And um, each year that you grow them, so you grew these seeds, let's say that next year that I'm going to be giving you, save those seeds. And the next year, they will become, uh, they will remember your garden, your climate, how you water, the natural rainfall, and it actually improve year after year. You've heard of families that have saved um, seeds generation to generation. They're, you've probably heard of them on TV or on YouTube. And... Um, they actually have developed whole companies just around the seeds that their families have saved year after year. Uh, now, there are certain problems you have to be aware of with heirloom plantings. And one is that they are more prone to diseases like your um, fungal diseases, your early blight, your late blight, especially in tomato plants. So you can literally knock this out by about 80%. And I'm going to teach you how I had done this. And it was quite by chance. But I actually have read about it. So that is going to come when we're going to talk about the tomato plants. But work with your plants. You're probably buying seeds from all different companies because you're not satisfied with this one. You're not satisfied with this one. But you got to work with the seeds that you have. If you like the taste, if you like the disease resistance, if you like even the way it looks, does it have healthy leaves? Are you getting a lot of fruit? Stick with that plant. Save those seeds. Okay, now there are basically two processes. And I have this actually in the handouts that you're going to get. 
So um, do pick it out or Julie will email you the handouts. So um, you can have them for your reference actually right in your computer. There are two processes and one is the dry process and the other one is the wet process. We're gonna talk about the dry process first. And in that, seeds are harvested from pods or husks that are usually dried on the plant. They have to mature on the plant. Now, if you're, take peas, for instance. Here's a peed pod that has dried on the plant. Now, I'm trying something new and I'm gonna share this with you today, um, the pea. This is a yellow sweet pea. The original one was from Johnny Seed in 2016. So I've been growing this and saving the seeds since 2016, but I'm doing something new this year. I am letting the seeds dry on the plant and keeping it on until the plant has died. So this plant was six feet tall and it's hard to even see the pods that were on there because they actually look like the dry leaves. I'm gonna pull them off now. Here's one, here's two, here's three. There were a lot more on here. But this is what I say. So you actually have to feel, ah, <laughs> ah, there's another one. You actually have to feel the leaves to see if that is a dead dried leaf or is that a pod? And I think these are all dried leaves. You know, you can cut this up, nothing wrong with it. It's not diseased or anything. Um, it's just dry. Cut this up. And you could put this right on the ground, or you could put it if you have a compost pile, either one. You know, don't just throw that out. But just to understand, this is something new I'm doing this year. I read about it years ago. But um, you have a handout here when we talk about tomatoes that alludes to the fact that as long, the longer that that seed can remain on the mother plant, the more it is going to extract the nutrients from the mother. This makes sense. Things have to make sense to you. Now, these seeds, here's a pod. This is probably a pod that has been picked off when the, the, um, the pod matured on the plant. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. Because to look at a dead plant for two months, um, you know, kind of is something that you, is not acceptable to you. Seed savers, the ones that do it commercially, have fields and they can actually let the plant mature to its uh, fullest extent. You may not be willing to do that in your garden. What I'm going to do next year, I'm going to save a section of my garden in the back of my garage. And I'm going to have plants grown there that I just want to um, mature into seeds. So, so these seeds, well, let's take this one. This, it came from the mummy's tomb. Much drier than the other seed that has matured and you're just picking off the plant. Let's look at it. And this is very, very easy to extract. In fact, when you're watching TV, you can, you know, extract them. Now, compare this to the seeds that you buy in the store. They're drier and they look different. If you, I don't even have one from Johnny's that, because I, I planted them all. Um, but uh, they are greener, let's say greener, and they are dry, but not as dry as this. There is a difference. We're gonna see next year if this pays to do that. It may, it may not. We're experimenting, we're learning as we grow. Okay, so that's the P. Now let's talk about um, garlic. In the 
books, it says that garlic rarely goes to seed. This is the first time that this has happened in my garden for the years that I'm growing garlic. Usually you will get in um, stalk and on there you're going to have a little garlic cloves that you could eat or you could plant. I have two flowers in my garden and it's an umble. And uh, each one of these is a capsule. And within the capsule are three black seeds. So, so, so far, this is what I have collected. Okay, here's your little black seeds for next year. To well, actually, I'm sorry, for the garlic seeds, you could plant them right now because they need a vernalization. And that is a cold period of freezing. So for a bulb to form from a garlic seed, it takes three years or three growing seasons. I can wait for that. I can do an area where I will seed this market or I'm gonna actually put some seeds um, around my uh, blackberry bushes. Not that I want to harvest them, is I want them to be a companion plant. And I do have these uh, lectures, programs, it's called From Garden to Table. And I teach you how to plant and how to plant companion plants within your own landscape. And then you could obviously harvest the fruit or um, the root plants, whatever you're growing within your own landscape. I am growing, I'm getting bolder and I'm growing more edible uh, vegetables and fruit in my front yard. My neighbors actually kind of know um, one area where I grow, but I'm growing my tomato plants in an area that I have not grown before. And I thought, well, the people are gonna see it on the sidewalk and pick them and that's okay. Um, but actually no one has. They're not familiar with that site, but Consider your property in four quadrants, your north, south, east, and west. And you can grow, segregate your plants. If you're growing different varieties, there is this thing called isolation. And we can't isolate a half a mile between varieties, like your radishes. Uh, your radishes have a uh, four block or half a mile isolation distance between varieties. So if you're going to sell your seeds, let's say, you want to respect this. So you would have, if you're going to sell your seeds, let's, you, and you may want to do that, have a little business, um, you have to plant one variety. Let's say there's a good variety of radish that is called the champion. Or uh, my favorite is an icicle radish that is French breakfast. So let's talk about the radish seeds now. Radishes are a very important crop. In ancient Egypt, radishes were inscribed in pyramidal walls. The Greeks presented offerings to Apollo, uh, which included turnips made of lead, beets made of silver, but radish made of gold. So this was a very important crop. And let me show you how, yeah, any, anything. Okay, my daughter is going to show you. Yay. Say hi. Hello. Okay, <laughs> this is a globe. And um, it's champion. It's a variety called champion. And it grows to be about, this is in containers. And it grows to be about three feet in containers or four feet. I'm going to say this here at the library. And when you come to the library, take off the salik. Okay. I have quite a, I have two plants that I brought here. Wow. I have some bags. But I want you to bring some envelopes um, or bags. Or boy, oh boy, Julie said that uh, these little kitchen for sandwich bags, these wax bags, this is perfect. Well, I'm really loving this. So she's always got some really good ideas. So I'll have take those a bunch out there. 
of these radishes. Now, let me show you how to separate this. I've heard them called pods. I've heard them called capsules. They are really sleek botanically. So let's take one off. Very easy to do. And they're very beautiful inside. And here you are. And you don't have to worry about them uh, breaking in your garden easily because they won't easily um, open up. So here they are. I want you to see they're beautiful inside. They look like they're white and they look like silk and they feel like silk. And here are your radish seeds. They're so beautiful. They are a um, like, kind of like a honey color. And I want you to compare these seeds to the ones that you get in the uh, seed packets. Now, the thing is, when I planted these seeds, this happens to be champion. I had them going in containers on the west side. On the east side, I had a uh, French radish. So I can't sell these seeds if I were selling seeds because they could have cross pollinated. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you have to be aware of. Myself, as a gardener, I'm always trying to learn different things. I'd be interested, and I did, do have my seeds at home, what I'm going to produce. It could be a mix of both, or it could be a brand new variety. So this is the um, excitement of growing things. Okay, so this is radishes. Also, uh, in your handouts, some very, very, very important things. And one, well, you got tips on saving seeds, which we are going through right now. But the seed saving chart. Now, I have colored the families so that you know that uh, certain families, let's say yellow, like your Solanaceae family are all in yellow. So these are the different plants. They nicely have broken this down into annuals and biennials. Annuals are easy to save year after year. Biennials require two growing seasons. And this handout will tell you the isolation distances or how much you need between varieties. Uh, I didn't talk about hybrids, but this is how long your seeds will last. So let's say the radish seeds. Okay, your radish seeds will live for five years. Now it does say here, can cross with wild radishes. And that's the first thing that I realize is, well, I don't have any wild radishes. I don't have to be afraid of this isolation distance. But the more I read into it, like the seed to seed book, it does state that varieties will cross pollinate. And since I do have these two varieties, next year I won't do that. I will choose. I will plant these for eating. See what I get. But the ones that I'm going to save into seed, I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose French breakfast because of the two that is my all time favorite. I, I love it. It's a sweet radish, it's a conical, it is white and red, and uh, it's something that my family likes and my neighbors like it too. Uh, also, this does tell you if it's insect pollinated or uh, does it pollinate itself? Like the tomato plant will pollinate itself. The pepper plant will pollinate itself. You cannot save seeds. If you buy seeds from hybrid plants and it'll say on their hybrid, nothing wrong with growing that. A lot of research has been put into hybrid plants, but you cannot save those seeds and replant them because and don't even bother to do it. It really is a waste of time. I'm telling you it's a waste of time. People will tell you on TV it's, it's really a waste of time, even on the YouTube. It's going to go back to one of the parents or the grandparents or one of the cousins. So it's really not worth saving those seeds. You want to save seeds that are heirloom seeds or open pollinated. That's why those seeds 
are actually becoming more expensive. I know that the catalogs push for the hybrids because that's their money makers. Those are the seeds that you're going to be buying every year. But you're not going to have that quality of fruit as you would from saving your own seeds. And actually, the joy that you're going to experience doing this. The other important handout that you have is um, Planting and Saving Guide. So this is another, there are two pages, and this is another important handout uh, that you're going to receive. And this also tells you your, if it's an annual or biannual, we're going to talk about biannual in um, the dry process of saving them, insect pollinated, and how to save seeds, little, little suggestions on how to save seeds. So these are important handouts for you. Now, biennial that you can save uh, is parsley. I have, I grow the curly parsley on one side of my property and uh, flat leaf parsley on another, and that's fine. Uh, I never saved seeds from flat, flat leaf parsley. This was the first year. It grows to be seven feet tall. I have a, just a section of it here. So this is it. This is just probably what about a three foot section. And this is the way it will dry. What I had done is I had it against a fence and I bungee corded this. I have it tied with a, a, a tie right now, but you can come and collect all as many seeds as you want there's enough here for all of Evergreen Park and <laughs> Oak Lawn. So, you know, you really don't need a whole lot, but take whatever you want. And let me show you how to do that. We're only getting the plastic yet. It's going to mm -hmm. be a little bit neater. Um, and I give you my humbles here. What happened to my humble? Oh, here they are. Okay. Parsley, as I'm reading, you really um, don't have to let it dry on the plant. It, it's really not necessary. I did overkill. But here are your umbels. That's why these umbels are kind of so small. And your seeds are on top. It is so easy. In fact, I'm going to get probably tons of flat parsley seeds in my landscape. And that's okay because it's a good companion plant. This is it. You take it off. You just take them off and oh. you don't want to say, this is called chaff. What I'm taking it off of is chaff. You don't want to say that in your envelope. So I really do like these uh, wax paper bags and I, I made a couple of them. I made four, but you could make more and just open it up. And you could put your seeds in your boy. This is this is really enough for that you would want in your landscape for the year. That's, you know what I, I do? I put mine in a um, cup in one of your little one cup measuring things, and they got that spout, and it's like so easy. So you would put your seeds in here, fold it over could tape it. And then, now the library, if you want to share your seeds, and I do encourage you to share your seeds. Um, the library has got these fantastic little paper pouches. You're going to put this inside, or you could just, if it's bigger seeds, like your pea seeds, you could just throw them in. But with their little seeds, like the parsley seeds, you could just put them inside and label flat leaf parsley the year because they're going to last, live for, do we say, oh, I don't even know if they have parsley on here. Let's see. Do they have parsley on the list? Uh, no. No, because you know what? Parsley is considered a herb. Five years. Five years? Oh, okay. So you put 2021, five years, grown in the ground. Okay. I, some of my seeds that I'm, I, I do have seeds name. We like for you. Put their name on there too. You could put your name on. I put my name 
on the seeds that I'm giving you. So if there's any questions, you know, the library can get in contact with you. And, and this is how we learn. This is how we learn is really from one another. Books are great. But when you learn growing things in your own backyard, you know, give some seeds to your neighbor and say, hey, uh, tell me how you like them, okay? I do have seeds for you. Uh, Fernley dill, they're in white Yay. clear packages. I, I, this is my favorite dill. I don't like the mammoth dill, it's too big, it's too aggressive. Fernley dill is like a refined lady. Mm -hmm. um, if it goes into seed, it's only about two feet high. So I have this growing in containers and in, in the landscape and in my raised beds, anything. And uh, I really enjoy this plant. I like the, the delicateness of the leaf also compared to the wider leaf of the mammoth dill. So you have some packets here. And this is actually from 2020. And the seed life is five years. And I did put this on here. So you say, oh, well, that was from last year. But the seed life is 2020. Oh, let me tell you, I bought some really expensive seeds this year from a, um, a nursery that was uh, highly recommended on TV. And I got seeds from 2020. And they says, oh, well, the seeds are uh, at full price. And they were expensive and there were not many in there, trust me. Um, and from that company, I bought squash that were 50 cents a seed. Very disappointed. And I'll tell you, remember that seed remembers. So I got to save the fruit that I got. And I got one butternut squash. So I'm going to save that. And when we eat that, um, you, you know, you're going to obviously eat it, see if I like it, and then, you know, extract those seeds, and then I will obviously have more than 10 seeds that I bought. Also, um, I have here that you can come one day and sit here at the library and, you know, separate these seeds, but I do have sweet pepper, Italian sweet pepper, I'm going to talk about that, my name is on here, and uh, these have to be separated. And uh, summer savory and onion chives. Now, the summer savory, this is a very important herb to grow. If you're not growing it in your garden, I want you to consider it. It is so fragrant uh, and it's a savory. So you can use this in your, your baked beans, your stews, your soups, not much. But why I'm bringing this here, it's not yet going into seed in my garden. The seeds are up and down. These are not leaves. The leaves have already finished and they're actually with kind of shrunk and they're giving all their energy into the seeds and the seeds are very, very fine. So what I do when this is not yet going into seed, you can still see it's green, it has to be completely brown. I cut this off and I put it in a paper bag upside down and I shake it. And then I will take that and then I will put it in my bags and divide. Um, you could also run your finger along this, but then you're gonna to have to clean the chaff. And it's very easy to do. Put it in something like this and blow gently, blow gently because they're very fine seeds. Uh, you can't have a fan. They talk about the fan winnowing in the books, but you know, you, you can't do that. So this is summer savory. And you do have some seed packets that I prepared from last year because these are not ready yet. Let's talk about pepper plants now. I uh, love to save pepper plants only because I bought plants for years I was disappointed with. I bought seeds for years I'm disappointed with. So I'm growing my own. I have three varieties. One is uh, sweet Italian, one is bell, and the other one is a mild jalapeno. So um, these are the seeds from, oh, I have tons of these, right? If you had come to the other program that I had here on uh, container planting, that we did the miniature plant, 
Uh, oh, and if you didn't drop off your profile tube yet, could please do so. I'm still collecting them. So thank you for those of you that did return. I really appreciate it. So this is Sweet Italian. Uh, this, this is, obviously it is a longer fruit. And I told you I'm doing something new this year. And what I'm doing is I'm having the seeds attached to the ovary. These are ovules. Ovules are seeds. And they're just going to flake right off. In fact, if I just put my finger, see how they're, they're just flaking right off? So save these containers. And if it came to the um, one program that I did have the hands-on program, uh, the small garden, the small herb garden, no, not the herb garden, the small succulent garden. You know, you do have this and these are from mushrooms and they make wonderful containers for saving all your seeds. So I do have my notes, what it is. And I do have this drawing in here. And this are my bell peppers. I just cut some bell peppers. We're going to have beer bratwurst today mm -hmm. when we go home. And I actually, there was a recipe how to make it in beer. So I sacrificed one of my blue moon beers and uh, made the bratwurst in there. And I cut up my peppers. And this actually happens to be from one of the bell peppers. What, what am I looking for? What am I looking for when I'm going to be saving seeds? I look for thick fruit. I don't want a skinny pepper. I, I want this thick fruit and I want few seeds. I would not be very good having a seed company because seed companies are going to get fruit that have tons and tons and tons of seeds. Uh, I want few seeds. So this happens to be my red bell pepper and this is my yellow bell pepper. So it has few seeds, it has very few seeds. Let me show you how to do that. Now the books say, you just take your pepper, cut it, take the seeds off. But I'm trying this and I'm inviting you to try this also. So I'm gonna show you. And I thought this looked like a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that I would bring this and, you know, being um, almost close to October. But they were various sizes. And uh, these are open pollinated. And um, they were bigger. They were smaller. But this happens to be a nice size. So what you do is you cut along the shoulder. Cut along it, okay. And then we're gonna cut, I was at Prairie Trails this Thursday doing the same program and I bought, brought a uh, sweet Italian pepper. Mm -hmm. Today I thought we would bring this. So cut along the seams. And I'm not gonna waste this, I'm taking this home, it's gonna use it. Cause this is just, oh, it smells so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And your peppers, as you know, are becoming more and more expensive at the stores. So I'm going to separate this. A lot more seeds in this small guy. The bigger ones have fewer seeds. Isn't that oh, interesting? Yeah. Okay. So this is how I'm saving it. I'm, I just put it, you know, you could put it anywhere on any kind of a plate and save the seeds. The books say you could just pop these off and dry it on a plate, and that's fine. That's worked for me for years. But I am going with the theory or the premise that the longer the seed can stay on the ovary attached to the mother plant, it is still extracting the nutrients from the mother plant. You know how the kids suck everything they can out of the mother. So there you go. There you go. This is why I'm doing this. Not, not my daughter though. She's the exception. <laughs> right. She's the exception. She is always there to help me. Okay. So I'm just going to put this in my container. And a lot of different suggestions on drying. So that's easy. Now let's talk about the wet method like your zucchini and your tomatoes. Anything that 
has a, um, oh, my favorite tomato to grow is pineapple. It's not, when I would tell my brother, come on over for some pineapple tomatoes, uh, they were expecting pineapples that I'm growing it actually pineapples. And I says, oh no, this is a variety. It's an heirloom variety. And uh, I do have three packets of seed and I'm going to give you these seeds also to divide. Now on the packet, it's, it's an indeterminate plant, which means it keeps growing, keeps growing. You could prune the top off at any time and say enough. Mm. You're just gonna mature on that plant. I only want it to grow so tall. Um, it's a sweet mild flavor, thin skin. This is what I'm looking for. Few seeds in my garden. This is the seventh generation. So I've been growing them for eight years, maybe more, from seeds of prior year. It's a large, robust plant. You know, it is a large plant. You're gonna to have to give it some real estate in your backyard. And I do buy the heavy cages and I grow them two together, most three together. And I um, attach them with that tie, the twist, not twist tie, what do you call those ties? They're yellow ties, electrical ties, like, and, and I, I do that to the cages and it makes them stronger because these are big, heavy plants. Um, they come in different sizes. They even come bigger than this. Uh, but this is a pineapple plant, pineapple tomato, traditionally. This is what you're going to see in the seed catalogs and this is what they're going to sell you the seeds looking at. Probably even bigger. I'm not growing it for the size. I'm growing it for just the taste and the thin skin and the few seeds. Now, these are smaller and this is kind of what I'm going for. So I'm gonna save seeds from a tomato that would look like this. It, is, it doesn't have the cracking. It is a nice, heavy, medium size or something like this. This is a little bit of cracking. So I would probably save the seeds more from this plant, uh, hoping that the genetics from it will pass on to future generations. But you know, I love this plant so much. And however I get it, as long as it's healthy, I am happy. Now, I told you, there is something that I have given you in your handout, and it was actually from Boys Town. And when you contribute, to that organization, they're always gonna send you some fantastic gardening tips. And you have this, and it's how to save seeds, what I've talked about. And also the very, very interesting paragraph that it would, you wouldn't even, um, you would read over it. There are some annuals that can be sown in the fall, like Cleome, Larkspur, Dill, as we know, dill will spread all, mammoth dill mm -hmm. will spread all over. Tomato and pumpkin. Tomato. Tomato. How can I take these seeds and plant them? Well, they're not really that specific. Even the pumpkin. Um, they mean for you to bury the whole fruit. Mm. So, gonna get, you're gonna get animal damage. Okay, I guarantee it. My neighbor has got big, big girl, big boy, early girl, um, Jet Star, and a lot of the cherry tomatoes that are hybrids. And well, are the squirrels there? Oh no, mm -hmm. they're in my garden because I'm growing the heirloom. The squirrels, no. And there's a big push on this in um, your health magazines. And they talk about buy food that your body recognizes. This has been grown for over 50 years. It's a, it's a plant that is um, passed down generations and generations. And this is one that has really survived. The seeds for pineapple are becoming very expensive to the point where it's not even advertised 
in the catalogs. You have to call them and they will tell you, oh, there's just a limited quantity um, because it is so sought after. It's a beautiful, beautiful fruit as you see this. It is a delicious taste. Now the squirrels. What I'm trying to do is out with the squirrels. This was not covered. Um, mesh. Put your tomatoes in a mesh. This happens to be from actually Halloween bric-a-brac. This is actually for my turkey. So uh, I'm saving all these different kinds of meshes. I wish onions would come in um, good, they used to be good mesh that you could save. Um, but, and some of my tomatoes, this is actually where the whole turkey came in. And uh, I will need this. And sometimes they grow three in a clump. You know, this could kind of be good for three. The only thing I've noticed, and my daughter has actually let me know about this. I says, hmm, this isn't working too good for some of them because they have holes in them and they're going through the top. The birds, the birds, the birds are going to nipple on the top for um, water, for liquid and nutrients. So um, probably the finer one is a little bit better and it starts saving this. Now, there's nothing wrong with this in saving it for seeds. Let me take this. And you know, I'm not even going to cut this up. You're going to cut along the equator. So it's a long this way. I like that because I, I got that from one of the seed books. I would usually say with crosswise, well, what's lengthwise with crosswise? Along the equator. So let's do that. Let's do that now. And I'll show you kind of what this looks like on the inside. And if the squirrels are going to bite it, I'll tell you where they're going to bite it from. They're going to bite it from the bottom because this is the juiciest, meatiest part. This is why I'm going pine. Look at the meat inside of that. And you have a few seeds that are around it. Okay. So what you do now when you extract the seeds, and this is the, the wet process, just take your finger, your thumb, and go and just get the seeds out. Very, very easy. You can still use the tomato. You can still use it. But I'm extracting all of the inhibitors. And the, they have, the tomatoes have growth inhibitors in there. Because otherwise, you'd have a um, tomato growing within a tomato. So we have to ferment. And this is the fermenting process. Now, that article that I read, you, in 2018, um, I had a lot of squirrel damage. I, they devastated about 50% of my crop. I had a high squirrel population. And I literally had to pick the fruit when it just started to turn. Uh, otherwise, I, I wasn't getting anything. I says, what am I going to do with all these tomatoes that are squirrel that you're not supposed to eat them? So what I had done is I buried them. And that's what the article is referring to. You have to bury the whole plant. So I am going to be doing this year after year. In May of the following year, I got these little plants up. May, around May 1st. So they knew when to come up. That crop that year knocked out that early fun, uh, the early blight and the late by blight. It's a fungal disease. It knocked it almost all out of those plants and the seeds from that plant, these seeds have remembered that and are carrying that within its genetics. Now, if it go back to its old ways, it can. I still have those seeds saved from that year that I buried it. But from now on, I am going to be burying some plants in the ground for them to come up. You, I'm going to mark it. And um, because you, if you have an area where you're growing tomatoes and, the, and the, the, like cherry tomatoes, you know, they fall and you're going to get a plant. And usually it's a wild cherry that you, cherry tomato that you're going to get the following year. So um, 
that's what that article is actually referring to. It means, you know, bury your seeds. So I'm going to take this, these seeds, and I will put them, I have okay, at home, this is what I put it in. I, I put it in these containers, and these are special containers that you could only get when you buy yogurt. <laughs> Okay, so you're, you're, you know, you're going to save these things and it's going to become um, a fungal. It's going to be fungi. So you would put that inside okay, with a whole lot more seeds. <coughs> and um, you're going to, don't add water. You're going to let it ferment. Now, unfortunately, coming here, my fungi, and I'm not going to open this up, you don't want to cover it. You want to leave it open. But my fungi kind of mixed in with my seeds. But the mm. good seeds will fall to the bottom. And the other seeds will remain on the top, the non-viable seeds. Spill this out in your garden. It's very beneficial. And then you take a strainer. And you will strain the rest. And they have it on TV or the YouTube where you do it in the sink, try to do it outside. You've got nice weather right now. Try to do it outside. This only takes about three days to ferment. And remember, it's not a mold. It's fungal growth. It's beneficial fungi that are fermenting your seeds. It's breaking down that inhibiting qualities of the gel and making your seeds so that you can save it from year to year. So, Take a hose and put it on, oh, like, a, what do I have in a shower? Not, not jet or not full. And then you're going to strain your seeds and then you're gonna put it on any kind. I really like this styrofoam. I like to uh, put the seeds on styrofoam. Uh, you can put it on a paper plate. I know that they talk a lot. Martha Stewart suggests the coffee filter. I don't like that as much because I can separate the seeds. Sometimes as they're still wet and um, they dry really nicely. So here they are already dry and they absolutely look beautiful. Here they are and this is the way they look when they're dry. And again, you can put it in your plastic bag, put it in your envelope, and then save it for next year. So I'll leave these with Julie and uh, she can divide those yeah. up. Or somebody, you know, come here on an afternoon and spend some time dividing these seeds up. It's, it's really well appreciated. Okay, now let's talk about storing. Okay, so story, and I'm going to not waste this. I'm just gonna put this in here and, oh, I also made some uh, beans from scratch. Cook the beans, so it's technically not from mm -hmm. scratch, but um, all these tomatoes, you know, you can make wonderful pesto sauce or, or paste. And I made tomato juice, it makes a wonderful juice. And if you like mild tomatoes, you're going to love these. Boy, I could sell these seeds. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. All right. Now, we're going to talk about storage. You want something that is going to be as airproof as you can. How I store my seeds is in a cool area. Basement is great. Um, I don't have any room in my basement to store. It is kind of damp there also. So you want it not to be too damp, but if I have it in a tin, it's gonna be perfectly fine. I have a north bedroom. It's always very cold and I put it on the floor. Don't put it up on a shelf because heat rises. And you know, get yourself some nice popcorn. My daughter bought us this for Christmas. And what I have here, is I have all my envelopes and I do have it in big envelopes. And all the information that I get from the seed books or from my neighbors or whoever I got the seeds from, I write it on the envelopes. 
And as you see, some envelopes, you know, are, are more detailed than others, depending upon the seeds that I'm saving. And some I don't even have in there yet, but I've already taken my notes like my peas. I still have to show my peas. peas in here. Then what I do is any notes or any information that I have, like your packet of information that are specific and pertinent to saving seeds, I put that on the top. Boom. There I grab it. So if I'm going to start my seeds in uh, March or April, probably April is the best time. I, I'll have all that information. Now, this is really great. This is another um, tin that my daughter bought us. And she says that you can still buy these in the stores. The chocolate is wonderful. She bought us two. My son right away grabbed it because <laughs> this comes in sections. How cool is this? The only thing is one cover. So say I could put my pea seeds directly in here, directly in here. My bean seeds, beans, you're, you're collecting all the information. You could have it on a stick them, tape the stick them on here, and then whatever you want in the third, perfectly sealed. I'll tell you if I could sell this chocolate too. <laughs> really, it's made beautiful. It's a beveled edge, and you, my daughter says you can still buy this chocolate. It's peppermint bark, peppermint bark, oh, yeah, not chocolate, about, yeah, peppermint yeah, bark. Yeah. If I'm not specific, she gets upset. Okay, so, so, oh no, uh, that's okay. But you know, if you were in the mall, <laughs> it's a Christmas item. So um, get yourself. Get those teas. Teas also come in some. Great containers. These are fantastic. You can freeze seeds. This will freeze in your freezer. I don't have room in my freezer to freeze something this big. But glass. Uh, this happens to be a from a gravy. Baby foods are the best. I'm thinking of buying some baby food because uh, it's a nice small glass and uh, it has a tight fitting jerk. This is from. You know, I still can't open this thing. Oh, here it is. Okay. This is from Gravy. Uh, do you remember the brand? Heinz, Heinz Gravy. Uh, and I like it because it's got a nice white mouth. So say I have enough peas, and I do have enough peas to put in here. Put the label on it. You have a good sealer, and you can freeze it. Don't put it in the back of your freezer because you're not going to remember I think you should put this on the door um, so that you can grab it when you're going to need it. You can also, if, if you're going to, let's say, do tomatoes, uh, put them in little packets for yourself and then put it inside of here so that you can just you know, grab one packet that you, you want to propagate for that year because the seeds are going to last a lot longer from the freezer than they will dry in your tins in your in your um, room. So freezing is another way to lengthen your your saving time. Okay, I think uh, did I mention these wax bags already? Yeah. And I'll keep those by the uh, seed library. So All right, let's check it. I made four. I made four, but I think you can make six out of this, six or even more. I really, really like this, and I, I like the texture. Um, you can buy, and this is my very least one, and and this is a uh, cell, a plastic. It's a plastic. It's got a little ziplock, but if it's not completely dried, if your seed's not completely dried, it's going to mold in there, and that's the only bad thing about plastic. But you know, if your seed is completely dried, you don't have any problem with that. So think, oh, and in one of your handouts, also I do have the books. There's three books that I highly recommend. Get them from the library. I don't have these in my um, library at home, but I am thinking about getting them. But before you get them, 
look at them, read them. You say, you know what? Is it worth me spending?